Hi folks, and welcome back to Conan Exiles. This is episode 20 of the Beginner's Guide 2023, and in this episode, we're going to take a little break from the the progress and the leveling and whatnot, and we're going to look into one of the new features that was introduced in Age of War Chapter 2, and that is Snake Pets. So they've introduced snake eggs around the map that you can pick up and you can hatch them into hatchlings and then you can put the hatchlings in your animal pens and grow them into snakes which you can then enhance even further with a battle pass object but we'll we'll deal with that when we come to it so what we're going to do first is we're going to go a couple of the locations that you can get snake eggs and I'll, I'll show you where they are i'm not i'm not going to show you them all because there is a lot of them uh, but i will leave a link in the the description below to Pixel Cave's video where he goes through all the different snake egg locations on the Exile Lands and the Isle of Sipta maps. And you can you can look at that if you want to find more locations. But I'll I'll go a few of them, and maybe maybe five or six of them. There, there's some pretty close to our base here. And we'll we'll go and get some eggs and then we'll we'll take them for hatching. So as you can see, I've dyed my armor to match the rest of the squad. I don't know if anybody can recognise a little theme in the armour colours and the, the patterns, but we'll, we'll uh, now seem to be like one squad. And uh, I'm going to head over to the first egg location that's nearest my base, and I will meet you there. Okay, see you soon. Okay, here we are at the first location. We are at West Wall in the Sepa Maru, and you can see the prison area just behind it, and this is the gate out to the... I suppose to the north of Setmaru. Let me bring up on the map where we are. We're here, so that's A7, just on the edge. This is the west wall here, looking out. So we're just almost on to B7, but that's where we are. And if we come out of this exit here, just as it starts to get a little bit dark, and turn left and head over here to these rocks, round about here somewhere. There they are. So just hidden behind those little rocks there is a little clutch of eggs. And if you interact with that, you get a snake egg. So one one snake egg so far from there. Right. Okay, that's the first one. I'll head over to the next one. Okay, we're at the second location now. So we're at another entrance to Sepa Maru. You can see like the king rhinos over there, the silver mines over there, the jawbones over there. And if you go in this entrance, let me just show you where it is on the map. So it's B6, just this entrance that goes in here. We've been here several times before. But before you go into the main city, if you look to your left where that mural of an eye is up on the wall, if you then climb off the horse and go up this top level and head right into the back corner over here. There we go, there's another clutch of eggs. Now, I will say that the eggs that you get in the nests of like the shalebacks and the crops, you can harvest them with a pick, and it's it's really difficult to get the actual a point, to, but you get lots of eggs instead of one. I've tried for quite some time to harvest these with a pick to see if you can get more than one, and I haven't been able to find a point to be able to harvest them. So we just have to pick them up with your normal hands and get one egg. But here we go. There's the second one, just at the the sort of southernmost entrance to Sepa Maru here. Okay, heading over to the next one. Okay, here we are at the third location. So that's the entrance to Kalel's stronghold there. And you can see the obelisk there. So let's bring up the map. Where we are is just here, so that's a, what is that, C8, just in the bottom bottom corner of C8, and we're actually going to head into B8, because we're going to head up the north side of the entrance here, and just at the bottom of this rocks down here, that's the actual entrance there, there it is there, got past it, there's another little clutch of snake eggs, right there. So that's three. Okay. On to the next one. Okay, see you soon. Okay, we're at the fourth location now. 
And we're in a, it's in a slightly different area now, because there is the guy that teaches us, I think it was two episodes ago, he taught us the Midnight Alchemist that allowed us to get to the Midnight Grove. Uh, that's Neebs Gaming's door, just over there. So we are here on the map, right on the edge between, what is it, E, D and E8. And we're looking for this area over here. So we, no, no, that's, that's not get off the horse, come on, off the horse. Uh, so if we head just north of where that guy is, in amongst this ruins around here, Somewhere around here. There it is. There it is there. So, we're a little bit, just a bit up from the arch. We've got another clutch of eggs. And we'll take that. And we've got a snake egg. So we've we've completed that. Like, I'm aware of three in this area. And there's kind of three in this area as well. So let's head to the next one, which is down here at Muriel's Hope. So I'll head over there. And I'll, I'll see you. Just over there. There it is in the distance. I'll see you when I get there. Right, that didn't take long. There is Muriela's Hope there, as I showed you here. Pretty close location. And if we get off and just kind of look around the bottom of this cliff face here. There we go. Another set of eggs. One snake egg. There we go. Right, next one again is not very far away. It's just over to the east a bit, so I'll bring you back when I get there. See you soon. Right, just as the sun rises, we're attacking a snake. Right, this area here... Oh, what's happening? Oh, there's a little cobra fighting us. Let's, let's take care of that. Right, yeah, this is Chaos Mouth. This is where you come to complete the, the keystone to complete the game at the end. But if we bring that up on the map, you can see where we are here. So it is F8. And if we zoom in, we've got this big area there, which is that there. And if we come on to this side of it, so the, the west side of it, there is a giant snake. It stands about here, so you probably will have to fight it. But just over here, between these rocks, yet more eggs. There we go. So that is the three areas three egg locations, I know it's in this area. Um, I believe there are more in sort of this area over here, and there's more in the jungle. Um, I can't think of any down south, but that's, that's at least, what's that? That's six locations for the west and this central area here that we can get eggs from, and we can just keep going back and farming them. Uh, so I've got, yep, six eggs now. So... I'm not going to go through every one. Like I say, you can go to Pixel Cave's video and he'll show you all the other locations that are on both maps. So we'll now need to hatch them. So if we open our inventory and look at them, it's going to take, it's well, when we pick it up, it's 24 hours for the egg to hatch into a hatchling, a cobra hatchling. Um, we can speed that up by sticking it in a compost bin. And I think it speeds up to like an hour, but I'm now going to head to where we've got an animal pen, back to our original base down on Noob River, and we'll get these hatched into hatchlings, and then we'll, we'll show you what we do with them. Okay, I'll see you down there. If I can find my horse, there it is. Right, welcome back to the good old Noob River base. Back, back when we used to live down here, remember it? Oh, oh fond memories, great stuff. We pop outside here, what have we got? We've got a couple of rhinos over there, we've got our first Wheel of Friendship that we made our first friends on. Um, we've got a Stygian Fighter 3 who's been standing down here all on his own, there's a horse in the stable, we've got a croc and a greater hyena left here, and our, our big animal taming pen. So yeah, we're going to use that today. So I've put down a compost heap in a stove, and if we take the compost heap and chick the eggs in there, They've went for 24 hours to hatch to just over an hour, an hour and hour and ten minutes kind of thing. So they'll they'll slowly hatch and they'll hatch into um, cobra hatchlings, which I believe don't have a spoil timer on them. Um, and then once they hatch into the hatchlings, we can put those babies into the, the actual animal pen and grow them into proper cobras. Uh, the food that cobras like to eat best in order to grow into the best chance of becoming a cobra alpha 
which they, they don't use the, the greater cobra name that they do with all the other animals, it's cobra alphas. Um, you get a 20% chance with exquisite meat. So harvesting the, like there's kodos just up there, and uh, is it gazelles or antelopes or something like that? The, the kodos will give you the best chance if you chop them up with a, with a good quality cleaver, you'll get exquisite meat. Uh, but yeah, exquisite meat will give you 20% chance. But if we go into our stove, and if we look at perfect, you get shade spice, perfect cut of meat. So for that, you need a shade bloom and 15 exquisite meat to make one uh, shade spice, perfect cut of meat. That gives you 30% chance. So let's, well, let's craft all seven of them. Uh, play. So we're going to craft that. That'll give us the best chance of getting a Cobra Alpha. When we, when we put them in the, the taming pen, but we're going to have to wait for these guys to to uh, hatch, or not hatch, yeah, hatch, hatch out of the egg into a hatchling cobra. So I'll bring you back when they are ready to go. Okay, see you soon. Okay, we're at the last 10 seconds now. Counting down. Three, two, one... Uh, hatch? Oh, because of course these ones are slightly after it. Oh well, they're a little bit later. Let's get let's get this one. I forgot they were at different timers because I picked them up at different times. Come on, come on, hatch. There we go. That one's another twelve seconds. Let, let's take the two of them to start with. Uh, we'll take five of this. And we'll go over and we'll stick them. How heavy are they? Not very, because I can walk. Oh no, they are 50. Yeah, I, I'm almost full, but... Right, we'll stick them in here as normal. We'll put the two hatchlings in. We'll put the shades, but if it'll take one each. And they'll start growing into cobras. Let's see if there's any more ready. Uh, not in that box. It's in that box. There's another two. Three. Okay, right, now I'm over encumbered. Right, that'll get the first five going. Put them in here. I don't have to actually go in the front door. There we go. So they should take 30 minutes by default. Um, obviously, I've got my timers screwed up a little bit faster. Um, so I will bring you back when they've all hatched. Okay, see you soon. Okay, welcome back. So... Let's see, can you... Oh, you can just see them. Well, that one's got glowing eyes, that's an alpha. Look at them dead straight out there. Yeah, you can't see that one, or that one, or that one, or that one. But you can see that one. There's one in there. Uh, so let me see. So the first one is a Cobra Alpha. So we've lucked out. Then we've got a normal Cobra, another Cobra Alpha, a Cobra. So we've got three Cobras and two Cobra Alphas. That works out absolutely perfect. So let me take an alpha and a normal one first. So let's put them, let's stick them down so we can have a look at them. Let's put on a bit of plane over here. Right, so there is a normal cobra. And let's put the cobra alpha down, so with the glowing eyes. So you can see this one has got a HP of 42 at level zero. Uh, let's see what its stats are. It has one strength. Zero agility, vitality, and grit, and 42 health at level zero. The alpha, much stronger. It's got 6022, but still only got 51. So, yeah. You're not going to be fighting anybody with that, are you? Pretty poor. Right. However, in Chapter 2 Battle Pass, uh, let me see. So, where is it? Uh, nope. There it is. Level 18 of Chapter 2 Battle Pass, you have Tamed Giant Snake. So you, you'll learn that if you get as far as level 18, and of course if you have the Battle Pass. And if we go into inventory, it's like other creatures that you craft them in your inventory, you need... So then the normal Giant Snake, you need a normal Cobra and a Sorceress Pet Food. And for the greater giant snake, you need a Cobra Alpha and some Sorcerer's Pet Food. So, Sorcerer's Pet Food is made in the Alchemist Bench, 
we've, we've used that before. Here it is. Uh, and that requires one gruel, one yellow lotus blossom, and one aloe leaf. So we've got that. So let's make two of them. One for the, the giant snake and one for the greater giant snake. There we go. Let's grab them. Now let's get the other guys out of the pen. So you're the other cobra and you're the other cobra alpha. Right. And then we can... Don't place them down. You can only do this if they're in your inventory and haven't been placed down yet. Where are they? I've got a lot of animals. There's the giant snake. Well, let's craft that. And there is the greater giant snake with the alpha and the food. Let's craft that. Let's put the giant snake down and the greater. Alright. Oh, I like how that kind of came out of the ground. Let's place that down. That's pretty cool. And six for the greater giant snake, which is a lot bigger. That's, I suppose that's not quite as big as the sort of giant snakes that you get, like, around the, the den and stuff like that. Um, that's probably bigger than them. Or maybe about the same size. But it's got the glowing eyes. So this one has got HP of 359. Also not great. 100. Zero, zero. So more than its standard Cobra variant, but not great. And this one, however, has got 1,707. With it's, so it's got the same same stats, but much more HP. So basically, you're not going to be able to do anything with any of these other than use them as decoration around your bases, because they've got so low HP. But this guy will probably be able to level him up a bit. What does he need for his? Where's his stats? He's got a really low percentage in vitality. He's got decent strength and a little bit of decent grit leveling as well. So we could we need to boost his vitality. So what is his diet? So his vitality, this third one is always the vitality. That one's vitality, that one's strength. So it's just feral flesh that he needs to boost his vitality. Uh, is that... Oh, the crocs respawned. I did kill a croc earlier on because it annoyed me. Let's kill that. Let's uh, get some feral flesh from it. Give me your flesh, please. So that'll give it a 14% boost. Still not super high numbers. Uh, let's give it that. Throw that away. So let's see. Stats has now got a 14% chance on top of the 58 so yeah, it's still only 72, so it's not brilliant. But I do have the well-trained park. So if I get him to follow me, straight away, whoa, straight away, his health has gone up to 4,834 with that plus 20 vitality boost that you get from, from the well-trained park. So he's got to start munching away and healing up. Let's put him on guard me. Let's just go and attack something. Another croc over here. Let's see what it can do. Right, go on, get him. Oh, they're, they're not exactly fast though, are they? Come on. Presume it does poison damage. Ooh, one shot at it. I forgot, I didn't even see. I'm not keeping away from the boss. Let's do another one. Did you, did you level up at all? Uh, no, nope, still level zero. Right. Hey, come over here. Did I give you the food? Oh, he's eaten almost all the food already. Here, have some more. Because he's healing up. And doof. 657 damage. Oofed. But I guess that's more to do with the... The well-trained part, but let's go take him over here. I mean, 600 damage, he's got to one-shot everything. Is he going to be a viable follower? Let's attack that. Oh, so slow, though. Guess they can't run like a, 
like a human can. Right, let's go. One shot that guy. <laughs> 460. What's that? Oh, let's see. Boom. Uh, did you get a level? I've got to see what that was before. But yeah, it's slowly. So I must have done because he's now 5,147. Uh, what is your armor level at? 866. It's not not bad. Right, I'm going to go and take him up and down the beach a bit and kill a couple of things and level him up. Get, get him up to... Level 5 is usually the, where you get the idea what they're going to be like. Um, I'm going to take him, do that, and then I'm going to bring you back and let give you my final verdict kind of thing. Okay, see you soon. Right, okay, we've done a little bit of leveling, as you can see in the background, the giant snake alpha is now at level 5, and has currently got 5,616 HP. So with the, with the well-trained boost, before we started, we had 4,834. Uh, let's see what its stats are like. So it started off with 6 strength, it's now got 10 after 5 levels. It started out with 0 agility, it's got 3. It started out with 2 vitality, it's got 7. So it's got 1 per level and maybe even a bonus, because it certainly didn't get health every level. Um, so it must have got a bonus one to get it up to 7. And it started off with a grit of 2 and it's now got 8. So let's see what its armor. Its armor is now up to 1,036. It's awful small in this picture here. It needs to get that bigger. So it's leveled reasonably well, and it, it's certainly one shotting. The only thing is we've we've taken on a uh, shalebacks, rock nose, hyenas, um, and it, humans, and it's taken on every one of them. Uh, we've done corrupted shalebacks, corrupted crocs, one shotted both of them. The only thing it hasn't is it took a corrupted hyena down to 10 health. So with the second attack or the bleed, the bleed would have bled out, it killed it. So I'm guessing hyenas must have a bit more armor than the other guys. Because, uh, yeah, it's basically one shot everything, including the rock noses. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's doing pretty well. Yeah. Like I say, I wouldn't bother with any of these guys, especially these guys with a 51 health. Uh, let's stop this one following. Let's put it back on it. I love how they come out of the ground. That is really cool. Uh, let's put it down. So, without the well-trained, it's 2,489, which is up from 1,700. So, yeah, it's that, that's not brilliant, but a couple more levels on that, and maybe if you got a health perk on it as well, um, that, would be, that would be fine. I guess its armor will be down now because it doesn't have as much Where's the, where's the point to hit it? Yeah, it's, armor's down to 356, because it, uh, as well, it's, um, it's strength, because it hasn't got the plus 20 on everything. But yeah, it's still pretty good. Um, I would more than happy to go around doing some, other than the fact it's really slow, but if you go far enough away, it just teleports straight to you, so it's not, not a massive deal. But yeah, that, that is snakes. That's the pet snakes that have been introduced uh, I'm not sure how it's going to work, because obviously the giant snakes is part of the battle pass. Uh, level 18 of the battle pass. So after chapter 2 is gone, the battle pass will have gone. So whether there'll be other ways of getting the giant snake skin, either in future battle passes or, of course, in the, the bazaar. Because uh, the basic cobras are just... They're they're just set decorations. They're, they're not used for anything at all. But... Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't do much with that either, because that's that's the skin of the basic cobra. This is the skin of the alpha, the giant snake alpha. So this is the only one I would actually use, just like I would only ever use a greater variant of any other animal. But yeah, pretty decent. And that's that's the chapter two snakes. So there you go. How to get them, how to tame, tame them, grow them, whatever you do. And uh, we've also done a little bit of leveling with one. So, yep, pretty cool. Okay, that's going to do for today. Thank you so much for watching, as always. If you like this video, please hit the like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye now.